Hi and welcome back. This is Dr. Barry. Today I want to talk to you about one of the most powerful tools you can use to keep yourself in good health and prevent terrible complications from chronic diseases like diabetes. Okay, The tool I'm talking about is a glucometer and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this, how you can use it, how you should use it, and how it can help you. But first, please take one second and hit that subscribe button, okay? It's very important that we share this message with other people who need to hear it. Many, many people with diabetes and hyperglycemia and insulin resistance don't have a doctor that really is that excited about these things and doesn't really give them the information that they need. So please subscribe and spread this message. Help me spread this message. Okay, glucometers. Now, this is a blood sugar machine, a blood sugar checker, uh, or a glucometer. People call it different things, but you can buy these at any pharmacy. You do not need a prescription. Many people think you do, but you do not in any state that or country that I'm aware of. You can buy this. Now, it's a little bit of money up front, but the, the cost you need to really think about is how much does each test strip cost? That's what counts. Even if the machine's a little more expensive, up front, but the test strips are half as expensive for each test, then in the long run, you're going to save a lot of money by getting one with the, the less expensive strips, okay? So that's the most important thing to look at is how much the machine costs, but also how much the test strips cost per strip. That's the cost that's going to add up over time. If you have type 1 diabetes, you obviously have to have a, a, a machine, a glucometer to check your blood sugar. Many type 2 diabetics have been told by their doctor for some reason that's unfathomable to me that they don't really need to check their blood sugars. I absolutely disagree with this 100%. I can't disagree with this any more strongly than I do. If your doctor has told you as a type 2 diabetic or as a, even a, a pre-diabetic that you don't need to worry about checking your blood sugars, you need to either try to train your doctor or find a new doctor. Uh, that's not true at all. If you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, if you have pre-diabetes, if you have insulin resistance, uh, you need to be checking your blood sugar because not only is it going to give you a number that you can just know what your blood sugar is at that moment, but it's also going to teach you what you should eat and what you should not eat, more importantly, to keep from becoming a full-blown diabetic or to move in the other direction and stop being a full-blown diabetic and move back to being uh, insulin resistant or pre-diabetic even. That, that can absolutely happen if you're a type 2 diabetic, okay? So... How do you do this? We've already talked about the price, but let me tell you this. Back in the old days, uh, it hurt a little bit to check your blood sugar, but now they have adjustable little lancets that you can adjust that go just deep enough to get a very tiny sample of your blood. Used to, you had to have a full drop or two, but these days, you don't even have to ha get a full drop of blood. If you can make the tiniest little red dot appear on your finger, that's almost always all you need. And you don't have to go deep enough where it hurts. Maybe one out of 10 sticks will hurt a little bit, but otherwise, it's almost painless these days. So don't be afraid of the pain. Don't be afraid of the cost. What I want you to be terrified of is developing type 2 diabetes and the awful, terrible complications that come along with that. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is you're going to check your blood sugar an hour after you eat. Okay. Now, if, if I'm using your blood sugar readings to adjust your medications, then I'm going to tell you to check your blood sugar two hours after a meal. So if, if I'm your doctor and you have diabetes, I'm going to say check a fasting blood sugar and then two hours after your evening meal. And that's going to give me an indication of where you're at, but also help me adjust your medication. But what I'd much rather you do if you're a type 2 diabetic or a pre-diabetic or insulin resistant is to never need medication for this condition. I'd rather you fix this disease, disease of nutrition by fixing your diet. Okay, and the glucometer is going to help you do that because if you eat a meal and you're like, I'm not sure if that was bad or not. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Pasta, was that? I don't know if that's good or not. I mean, it's whole wheat pasta, so it's probably good. But if you have a glucometer, you can check your blood sugar one hour 
roughly after you eat that pasta. And then immediately you're gonna have feedback based on what your blood sugar number is. Was that meal good or not? And here's a hint, it's not gonna be good, okay? And I've had many of my type two diabetic patients or previously type two diabetic patients who were told by other doctors that oatmeal is a wonderful breakfast for a diabetic to eat. They checked and, I, and they followed my guidelines here and they checked one hour after a big bowl of hearty, delicious, wonderful, healthy uh, Wilford Brimley oatmeal. And when they saw the blood sugar number, they immediately knew that Dr. Barry was right. Oatmeal is a terrible food for a diabetic to have for breakfast. Oftentimes it's better to eat a jelly donut than it is a bowl of oatmeal. The same way with a bowl of skim milk and Special K or some other super healthy breakfast cereal. When you check your blood sugar one hour after that breakfast, you quickly realize, hmm, it doesn't really matter what they said on the television commercial because that's a terrible breakfast for me. And then you'll know just don't eat that anymore. Or if you say, yeah, I know oatmeal is terrible for me as a pre-diabetic or insulin resistant or type 2 diabetic, but I love it. And so every now and then I'm going to eat it as a treat. But the glucometer helps you know, yeah, oatmeal or special K milk, that's a treat. That is not something you should eat on a daily basis. Now, once a year, you have a piece of birthday cake because it's your birthday and that's a treat and that's fine because we're human and we're never gonna be perfect and that's okay. But if you are under the, the false assumption and have been given the false advice that, that oatmeal is a great breakfast for you, you'll eat it every morning or, or several mornings a week thinking you're doing a great job, not realizing that you're doing permanent damage to every small artery in your body, damage that can never, ever be taken back. So get a glucometer and check your blood sugar one hour after a meal. Now, after you've checked, after you've had a, a breakfast of oatmeal, you'll, you won't ever have to waste a test strip on that again. You'll just know that's bad. You don't need to eat that. So stop eating that, okay? Then have the next morning, have a, bre a breakfast of bacon and eggs. Check your blood sugar one hour after that breakfast and see what it is. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised that one hour after that delicious breakfast, your blood sugar's still fine, okay? A lot of people believe that drinking milk or drinking fruit juices are, is great for you, it's good for you, it's healthy. We've been told for the last 50 years to drink your orange juice. Plus they drink that organic orange juice that's sugar-free and they squeeze it themselves. That's fine. Don't take my word for it. Check your blood sugar one hour after you have that big glass of organic orange juice and see what your blood sugar is. And I think that you'll be shocked to find that that's not such a great thing for you to be drinking. The same way with milk. A lot of people say, now look, I've been told forever that skim milk's good for me and I'm gonna keep drinking it. So be it, don't take my word for it. Check your blood sugar one hour after you have that big glass of delicious milk. See what your blood sugar is. That will answer the question for you. You can do this for breakfast meals, lunch, or dinner meals. If you have a dinner and, and you have half of a chicken and 10 pounds of broccoli, wait an hour, check your blood sugar. I think you'll find it's just fine. But if you add one little half slice of bread, or if you add one little ladle of gravy, or if you add one little tiny serving of rice, you'll get a different number. That's how you know what you should actually eat and what you shouldn't. And so after you've been doing your research at home with your own glucometer for about a month, it'll be very rare that you ever have to buy and pay for another uh, container of test strips because you will know, you'll have a list of foods that you know, if I eat that, my blood sugar is going to skyrocket. And you'll have another long list of foods that are delicious and nutritious, and you'll know if I eat that, it's gonna be fine. I don't even have to check it again, I just know. But anytime you tweak a recipe, anytime you add a little extra something, or anytime you try a new food that you've never tried in your life, which I highly recommend, then check your blood sugar one hour after you've had it and see what your blood sugar is. That will answer your question. Because, you know, I've had a lot of people say, now, Dr. Barry, we're all unique individuals, and I totally agree. We are. And so there may be some people who can eat a small serving of rice, organic brown rice with the husk dill on or wild rice, and their blood sugar may be fine an hour after they eat it. And if so, 
so be it. That's fine with me. I'm, I'm not trying to argue. I'm just trying to keep your blood sugar under 140 all the time, even an hour after you eat. And in order to do that, you're going to have to come up with a list of foods that you don't need to touch, okay? Now, if you have any questions about this or how to do this, or if you're already trying to do it and you have questions, please leave a comment below. Because as my listeners know, I answer every comment, I answer every question, because I want you guys to know the truth about this, okay? I'm not trying to get you to believe what the American Diabetic Association says, or the American Heart Association says, or even what Dr. Barry says. I'm trying to get you the best health you can have and to live as long as you possibly can. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please take a second and share this on your social media, okay? Because you know you have friends and relatives who have high blood sugar who need this information. Please share this and I'll see you next time, okay?